Now what we have here is a typical question on roots of a quadratic equation. And we've got two parts to this question and you might like to give them a try and if you're stuck you can always fast forward to any one of these two solutions. Okay, well what we have then is a quadratic equation. The equation x squared plus k minus 3 times x plus 3 minus 2k equals 0 where k is a constant and we're told it has two distinct real roots. And in part a we've got to show that k satisfies this inequality here. k squared plus 2k minus 3 is greater than 0. And then we're going to go on to find the possible set of values of k. Well, when we talk about roots of a quadratic equation, that's the solutions, we should be familiar with this background work. If we've got any quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then x can be found out by using the quadratic formula. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And the number of roots, that's solutions for x, is dependent on this part here, b squared minus 4ac. This part is often called the discriminant. That's b squared minus 4ac. If it's greater than 0, a positive number, you'll always get two values for x, two roots. If it equals 0, you only end up with one root. But if it's a negative number, less than 0, then because you can't square root a negative number, you end up with no roots, no solutions. If you're doing it on your calculator, you'd get an error on your calculator. Well, in this problem, we're told that this equation has two distinct real roots. So that means that b squared minus 4ac must be greater than 0. So that's our starting point for this question then. We know that for two roots, okay, let's just put for two roots, b squared minus 4ac must be greater than 0. And I'd encourage you to write something like that. b, though, is now the k minus 3 part. It's the coefficient of x, so it's k minus 3. So we can write, therefore, k minus 3 all squared. That's b squared. Now minus 4 times a. a is the value in front of the x squared term, and it's going to be a 1 here. So I can put 4 times 1, and then times c. c is the constant on the end here, and that's going to be 3 minus 2k. So we've got 3 minus 2k there. And if we multiply all this out, it's got to be greater than 0. So, k minus 3 all squared. Remember, this is k minus 3 times another bracket, k minus 3. So, if you do that, you're going to get k squared. And then you get k times minus 3, which is minus 3k. And then you get another k times minus 3, so it's minus 6k. And then you get minus 3 squared, which is plus 9. So if you're unsure of this bit, just do k minus 3 with another bracket, k minus 3, and you will get that. Then we've got minus 4 times 1, which is 4, times it with a 3, and you've got minus 12. And then you've got minus 4 here times minus 2k, so that's going to be plus 8k, and that is greater than 0. So we've got k squared, and then we've got minus 6k plus 8k, which is plus 2k. And then we've got 9 minus 12, which is minus 3. And that is greater than 0. So we've shown that k satisfies that inequality. OK? Right, in part b, we've got to now find the set of possible values of k. We've got to solve this quadratic inequality. So we'll just put it down over here. OK, that we've got k squared plus 2k minus 3, and it's greater than 0. So how do you solve quadratic inequalities? Well, 
try and factorize it. This one does factorize. We've got two brackets here and it's going to be a k and a k and then it's going to be a plus 3 and a minus 1. If you expand that you're going to get k squared minus k plus 3k so minus k plus 3k is 2k and 3 times minus 1 is the minus 3 and this is greater than 0. Now don't make the mistake of saying k plus 3 is greater than 0 or k minus 1 is greater than 0. We don't do that. We find what is called the critical values. The critical values are the values of k which make this equal 0. Okay, so the critical values, what are they going to be? Well, the critical values are k equals minus 3 or k equals 1. Putting minus 3 here would mean that minus 3 plus 3 is 0, so this bracket would be 0, and putting k equals 1 in here would mean this bracket was 0. So we've got these two critical values. And what do we do with these critical values? Well, we generally turn to a sketch graph. And in this case, our graph is going to have this horizontal axis as k. And if I call this axis y, I'm drawing the graph then of y equals k squared plus 2k minus 3. Or, essentially, k plus 3 times k minus 1. It's the same thing. But these critical values tell us where this would equal 0 at minus 3 and 1. And these are these points on the k-axis here, minus 3 and 1. And if we were to draw this kind of graph, because it's a positive quadratic equation here, then it's going to be a U-shaped graph. So we've got a graph looking something like this, coming down through there and then going back up through the 1. Now, what do we want? We want these, this equation, or this equation, they're both equivalent to one another, to be greater than 0. So we're looking for where this is greater than 0, where y, in other words, which represents k squared plus 2k minus 3, is greater than 0, above the k-axis here. Well, that's clearly going to be this stretch up here, and this stretch of the curve there. And that means that the values of k, which give us these values here, are going to be the ones that are greater than 1, and the ones that are less than minus 3. So we can put that down, that we can say from the graph, okay, from the graph, okay, y is greater than 0 when k is less than minus 3 or k is greater than 1. And that's our set of possible values of k. Alright, so it answers part b. Well, I hope that's given you an idea. And that brings us to the end of this question.